welcome to a special edition of uh, Faith Boost, what I learned from church. This is the what I learned from church edition. So today, what I learned, um, this is a, a continuous um, teaching uh, from my father in the Lord, my pastor. So the teaching um, topic I hope I got it right. It's developing winning mindset too, because he he thought developing winning mindset one couple of weeks ago. I want to watch it because that Sunday I was teaching the children, so I went and watched it. It's really powerful. I think you should watch it. Um, go to Shola Babalola Ministries on YouTube, Google it. You know S O L A. S O L A B A B A L O L A Shola Babalala Ministries. You 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 will get the, the you know so you can get the full measure. So this is a summary. Developing a winning mindset. Proverbs twenty four five seven. It was the main scripture. Proverb twenty four five seven. I want to <clears throat> I want to get it. Um. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs. Sorry. <laughs> Proverbs 24. Um, TPT. So let's go. Let's go. From verse 24, verse 5 to 7 says Wisdom can make anyone into a major warrior. And revelation knowledge increases strength. Wise strategy is necessary to wage war. And with many astute advisors, you will see the path to victory more clearly. Wisdom is a treasure too lofty for a quarreling fool. So, the scripture is very, obviously talking about wisdom. And we know the book of Proverbs talks about wisdom, but I'm going to curtail what I'm going to share in this edition with what I got from my notes, gleanings from my notes. <laughs> so they so say there must be, that's the main, the main scripture, right? Say so winning should be a lifestyle. Winning is for a believer. Winning should be a lifestyle, not an event. And how does it become from something that occurs every now and then to becoming a lifestyle? Of course, we have to develop a system. A system must be developed around the, around the winning mindset, around the vision that you have received from the Lord. So that's the wisdom behind it. So we call automation. You see how, example, if you go to McDonald's today, right, everything is automated. It, everything is automated so but i don't want to go into food because i don't want to <laughs> any any it's not about food but the example i'm giving is just the automation part of every functioning company coca -Cola, all of the those big big companies that has been in 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 in, in existence for 100 plus years 50 plus years they survive because they have established a system so he's saying that there must be that's basically that, you know, that's basically what, um, if, you know, if you look at that scripture, if you go back to verse 3, it says, wise people are builders. They build families, businesses, communities, and through intelligence and insight, their entrepreneur enterprises are established and endure because of their skilled leadership. The hearts of people are filled with the treasures of wisdom and the pleasures of spiritual wealth. You see, the Bible is amazing. Everything we need is a manual for life. The issue is we do we really practicalize it. So that's what my pastor was teaching today that the the the, the winning mindset for, for us to win in life and have a sustainable win, you know, and stay in the victory on in the victory lane consistently is that we must um we must you know we must um build from what the scripture say we must build a structure, we must build the strategy, our strategy, our vision, we must build a structure around it. Develop wise strategies. 
and use it to wage war against my own. I wrote against poverty and ineffectiveness. That's what I wrote down. So wage war against whatever it is that is making me ineffective in life that is making me not to and poverty in different dimensions i'm not going that's not what he thought but this is my interpretation of what he was saying poverty in knowledge poverty in wisdom poverty in finance poverty in any level in relationship any level where there's in the scripture the holy spirit is, is bringing to me you see when you see personal revelation is what when you're being taught something right you're being taught the scripture the, the Holy Spirit also gives you personal revelation and how it is your bingo word that you need to work on. The, the scripture the Holy Spirit is reminding me as I'm sharing with you is um, the book of Isaiah. And it, it doesn't look like it's connected, but Isaiah 40, I, I think from verse 3 to 5, where it says, there's a voice in the wilderness, make he prepare the way of the Lord. Let the valleys be filled up. Let the mountains be demolished. Let the crooked places be made straight. Let the the the... the the rough places be made smooth so that say that then it will be an expressway an expressway it's not like you know building a structure that is workable right amazing what the holy spirit can do when we let him and how he interprets scriptures for us and my now is to go implement it right because that's the most important part because jesus said if you hear these things blessed are you if you do them so this is what I learned from church today. So structure, <clears throat> the, the main thing is there must be a structure. I know a system that we uh, build around that, 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 that um, the vision, you know, strategy, that strategy, develop why strategy and use it to wage war against, like the scripture says, against, against, against whatever you need to wage war against so and um live intentionally uh hence you know you know as you build the structures it automation helps makes things effective and re, you know reduces time wastage and also give you more time to take care of things that are really important uh, make a decision to win God, God's way. That's the second thing. It says start doing it right from the beginning, right from... So for young people, much, much younger people, if you're under 30, so you have a time advantage over all those of us that are over 30. So, and then it says choose your battle. You can get involved in everything and everywhere and with everybody. Jesus is the only one that died for the whole world. So, you know, if you remember, I always say there are people God sent me specifically to. There are people God sent you specifically to. So each of us must find out what is it. Jesus, regardless of all the miracles he did, the specific thing he came on earth to do is to hang himself on the cross. Like lay down. He said, I lay down my time to allow himself to be uh, crucified on the cross. That is what makes him the savior. Nobody else can do that. All the other things he did were peripheral. Elisha must become the mantle, uh, mantle bearer of Elijah. If he was very wealthy, he, until it was him um, taking the, man, the mantle of Elijah, Elijah. That's how he fulfilled the destiny. So we must find, you know, each of us will have to find, you know, what we were born to do and get you know, get it and get start and start getting it right on a daily basis. So we have to choose our battles. We can't get involved in everything and in with everyone. No. The next one is um we have to focus on the things of destiny. You know, Apostle Paul say everything is lawful, not all things are expedient. So I need to start separating things from things. The Holy Spirit is reminding me of Genesis. In Genesis, I don't know if you ever, you know, noticed that. The Bible said that God separated the waters from the waters. So I need to start separating things. We need to start separating things, separating things, things that are lawful and things that are expedient. Okay? So if the things I need to get myself in things that are lawful, to separate my, 
from things that are lawful to things that are expedient. So think and plan ahead.